that's a good one. Oh, I'm supposed to give that back. When you're living on board a narrowboat, you don't have to pick up a load of junk as you travel around, and it really does affect you because the space is so limited. And with the charity shops been closed for such a long time, I've accumulated quite a lot of stuff that I was sure I would have gotten rid of by now. In my case, as a filmmaker, or someone who likes to mess around with action cameras and smartphone cameras, like the one I'm filming on, it just means I end up with loads of little gizmos and things that I think, yeah, might come in handy, might not, give them a go. I've got some really good ones, like this is a Bluetooth remote control for the camera, so I can set it up and then press record. And then there are other things like, well, things designed for hot shoes. I don't use that sort of, sort of cameras, SLR cameras. And then I've got um, some makeshift gadgets like this plate that I was using to mount a GoPro on. Anyway, today's video addresses the fact that I once had a bicycle on my roof and now it's no longer there. My battered old bike. So uh, I might need to go and try and get rid of that at some stage. Yeah, at the end of the video, we're going to find out where it actually ended up. We're going to take on some blanket weed, see what it's like to moor up in the middle of a canal, and also what it's like to really get quite stressed out about traveling on the waterways, and then overcoming that, of course. And I think after all this, I definitely deserve a beer of the week, so we'll enjoy one of them as well. But I couldn't take a chance on any of these sort of gadgets without the help of the following people who are supporting me on Patreon. The Crank It crew are behind my videos. These are the people that are supporting me financially on Patreon. But Patricia Young, she's a producer of the vlog. David Poddington, Andrew Millard, another producer. Jenny Campbell, JC Diamond, Rowan Rush Morgan, Kevin Mitchell, Sharon Palmer, Joe Oxley, and Melanie Ball. Thank you all so much for supporting me on my journey. At the top of this staircase lock, you'd normally feel quite daunted. These are huge locks you've got to take on. Um, so it is nice to have a friend along who can, yeah, help you down, but also give you a bit of moral support as you do it. I'm just here with my mate Philly, and he's, he runs a Facebook page for me, like Canal Boat Diaries Facebook page, which I'm very grateful for. But also, what's your, what's your day job? People will love this. What's your day job? Uh, I'm a boxing timekeeper on, on the sports channels, so if there's a big boxing match on, on Sky or BT or whatever, and the guy goes second out, round one, ding ding, timekeeper, Phil Morris, that's me. Fantastic, he also runs a charity called Checkham Lads about testicular cancer, and I'll link that down below. What are you saying? I'd rather be cranking it. Despite watching numerous YouTube videos about this staircase lock, we still managed to flood the towpath, <laughs> and, um, I was surprised to also see the biggest spider I've ever seen in England. Oh, just oh, that's oh, that sends shivers down my spine. Built in 1770 by Thomas Telford, he he didn't build them, did he? He didn't lift a finger, but he designed them, and they're hewn out of solid sandstone, which I think is quite incredible. And not just three, like there are today, there was five originally that went in a straight line as the canal went right down to the River Dee. But looking down through the clouds on a modern map of Chester, we can see that there's only three locks now. And the canal takes a different route, not down to the River Dee directly, but up north, which heads towards Ellesmere Port, our destination in this video. 
Well, I certainly am grateful for Philly's help here because these gate paddles are taking forever to wind up. And that must be a safety feature to stop people from letting in too much water at one time. Because, uh, yeah, these are deep locks and bad things can happen when there's water suddenly gushing in. Trust me. With Northgate locks behind me, I nipped around this sharp corner, uh, got a glimpse of Telford's warehouse where the narrowboats used to load and unload. And over on the left hand side you can moor up and you've got a view of the passage down onto the River Dee, which I don't think is, is, any, is accessible anymore. Oh, oh my god, it's an Airbus A300-600ST, aka a beluga. There's only five of those in the world. Mm -hmm. This part of the Shropshire Union takes us out towards Ellesmere Port where it meets the River Mersey and the Manchester Ship Canal. There are no locks or swing bridges standing in our way, but there's a ton of blanket weed I can see in front of me. I want to get to Ellesmere Port so I can have my tea, tidy up, wash my smalls, all that sort of stuff. And also I want time to explore the area. I hate being in a rush. But sometimes when you're set back by problems like this, you do feel under pressure. Oh my God. I've only gotten like a mile out of Chester and I'm just, can't move. I forgot to mention my other favourite thing is wind. I love it when it just blows the boat all over the place and you lose complete control. And when you free it, finally, you just get blown back into the weed that you'd just taken off your propeller. I love it. I'm so pissed off. It's just too windy to move. Every time I push the boat out, it blows back in again. Every time I try and reverse back really fast or try and take off at speed, it's just keep hitting that bank. So I'm tying up and I'm just going to go inside and get on with some other, some other stuff. Contrary to most people's advice on how to be successful or how to overcome failure, I, I just like to give up for a little bit and uh, come back to it later. And maybe I'll have more experience, certainly more patience for the task at hand. Well, it's still windy, but hopefully not as bad as it was, so I should be able to get out of this mess. The water's so clear here, you can see the bottom of my boat and how much it's covered up in weed itself, so I mean, that's not helping. <laughs> I've spent about the last 18 hours Almost like almost a whole day stuck, day and night stuck in this part of the canal. No other boats around because no one can sort of drag me out of it. And I can't call the Canal River Trust because we're in a pandemic still, and at this point in time, they can't just come out and help me. So it's only me that can get me out of this fix. As soon as I start the engine up, the danger is that I'm just going to run into some of that again. Just here. I just moored here. I just want to get past that. That would be like a major achievement. I know that the propeller is currently fouled up with weed, completely just chock a block. Almost to the point of losing power, but. I just want to get past the bit I was moored up. With my initial goal of making it to the end of this canal, 
And I'll scale back to creeping along a few meters from where I was moored. This is a real test of my mental capacity for stress and patience. Uh, yeah, this is the real side of boating, guys. <laughs> Amazingly, we're on the go again. So, fingers crossed I can make it a little bit further at least. I'm just crossing my fingers at this point. It is good to every now and then do a little reverse, uh, full reverse on the propeller just to try and see if you can clear anything off. But you've also got to watch that you don't lose the position in the middle of the canal. Just give the rudder a little bit of a wiggle. And then keep going forward. to know what the bottom of the canal looks like. Something like that. Well, it is round here anyway. No turning back now, that's my last turning circle, I think. Turn, uh, winding hole, so, uh, yeah. Just gotta keep going forward, just gotta keep back the guys. Until this point, I'd seen plenty of people walking and cycling along the towpaths, but I'd not seen any boats. Where were they? Be a little bit of a sort of ghost town really you know no one's here and it's just weed all over the canal so no movement so strange Right now I'm about two and a half miles from Ellesmere Port, from the end of this 66 mile canal. So I'm almost there. Come on! That's a surprise, another boat! Bloody hell! <laughs> you all the time. Oh thanks! Yeah, <laughs> I wasn't expecting to see a boat there and I could have edited that out to make the whole story a bit more dramatic but you just can't deny the feeling you get from seeing smiles on other people's faces who are going through exactly the same thing. Only one mile away now. Honestly, at the start of this day, if you'd told me if I thought I could make it to Ellesmere Port, I would have said, no, you're joking. Can't believe it. This is amazing. If we could just make this last stretch now, after being stuck for 18 hours in one spot on the canal and having to go in and out of the weed hatch about 15 times in that day, sometimes for an hour at a time, it really did feel like a huge accomplishment to finally make it to the end of the canal.
made it. I'm here at the National Waterways Museum and I'm dead. Thanks to all the blanket weed, it took me two days just to travel nine miles. Unfortunately, when I got there, the National Waterways Museum was closed, but as a result, I had the whole site to myself. I just want to explore it straight away, but there's a few locks here and there's boatyard, all kinds of things. But all I feel like now is just crashing out and having a beer. <laughs> My first preparation, tidy up, clean up job was unfortunately a sad one. It's recycling at the museum. Just got to walk around the back, uh, of course, um, but it's quite a sad recycling area at the moment because I'm having to also let go of my bike. The gears are broken, uh, the flap tires, it's, it's rusty. Goodbye, goodbye bike. You were very good, no you weren't good to me at all, it was a nightmare. <laughs> it just didn't work from the start. Phew, we made it to the end of the video. I don't know about you, but I'm just exhausted having edited all of that. So uh, yeah, what a journey that was. And whilst you were finding out where my bike ended up, I managed to sort out all my little trinkets and gizmos. And so now all my crap is in a slightly smaller space than before. So it's great. I, I feel organized, energized to uh, crank out some more videos for you. And now it's time for me to enjoy a beer. <sighs> That's not going to be big enough. I need, I need a bigger one. There we go. Cheers. And thanks so much for watching, supporting, subscribing, whatever you do. Keep on doing it and keep cranking it. Just drink. I'm just going to drink this. There's not other beers are available. I just fancied this one for today. Cheers.